Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. Today I have a long one for you. Um, I'm doing a real-time tutorial of the Kingfisher's feathers that I recently finished. So um, be prepared for a one hour video. I hope you'll enjoy it. I'm working with Faber-Castell Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance on Canson 1557 paper. So let's get going. All right, let's move on to the wing. I'm going to start with that and then I'll do the orange belly after that because I like to start with the darkest parts in the area. So I'm going to start with the very left area. I'm using Cobalt Turquoise 154 as a base layer. As the base layer here, or the undertone, seems to be a little bit greenish. So I'm going right in with the turquoise. I'm not pushing, just putting down a light layer. Drawing around the white spot here. And following the curves of the feathers. I even see some more green in there, so I'm going to look for a green that I can add on top. And I'm looking for a bit of an, a bluish green. So here I have dark thalo green, number 264. Which is leaning a bit towards the cool side. So a nice cool green tone, and I'm adding that on top. Especially in the area where I see a green hue. So a bit on the center. And I'm only lightly glazing that. All right. Now I can start adding the darker blues. I'm going for little bit of Delft Blue again, 141. I'm going to outline the wing with that a little bit. Not by drawing a tight line around it, but to just darken up the edges. And the wing is divided in different parts, in different areas. And then I'm following the curve of the wing, already trying to create some texture. And then, of course, you can also see some brighter blue in there, here and there. 
So I'm going to get cobalt blue, start darkening up the medium tone a little bit. I'm starting to draw strokes to already to already try to represent the shape and the direction of the feathers. So this is the one shape here, and then we have the rest of the feather. So this piece of wing is basically lying on top. Alright, I'm going to add a little bit of light phthalo blue, 145, just to compensate the amount of turquoise and green in there, neutralize it a little bit. And at the same time darken up the base tone a little bit more. And now I'm going in with Helio Blue Reddish and I'm going to start adding some of the darker tones in there. Definitely on the edges and at the start. And I'm going to spend some more time on drawing out the shapes of the feathers. Creating some of the shadows. Slowly starting to build up the density. I'm 
want to add a little bit of purple, some violet here on the edges for that nice purplish glow. And then I'm going to take indenturine blue to darken up the edges, shadows even more. Creating shiny feathers is all about contrast again. So the difference between light and dark. So I'm really going to spend some time on hyping up the contrast. I'm also creating the nice edge on the white spot. And then I'll continue adding a little more pressure in the areas where I want it to be quite dark and adding a little less pressure in the areas where I still want to be able to um, add more colors. Going to stay away from black as much as possible here. So I'm going to create the dark colors, the very dark colors with the blues and maybe some brown, some purple. I'm really liking how the colors are starting to look still it's not quite the right type of blue so I'll need to work a little bit more on that first I want to create some more texture Let's add some more blue, another type of blue. I want to go for this blue from Carnage, Middle Cobalt Blue, 660. This is a really nice ocean blue. 
not going to add it everywhere. On some places I still want the turquoise and the green to show through. And the, the luminance, they layer really well on top of the polychromo, so I don't need to push. Just lightly add the blue on top. Sorry for my neighbors. Always when I want to film, they'll start screaming to each other. And that's also one of the reasons why my videos have been so slow. Because I always seem to hear my neighbors. These flats are quite old, they're not isolated very well. So I can always hear them walk. Um, I, can hear them I can hear them scream, I can hear the toilet. So I don't want all those things to show through in my videos. But I do have to film. So I need to find a way how to um, find a way to isolate that so I can just film whenever I need to. If any of you know how to do that, how to isolate a room to make sure that I don't hear the neighbors anymore, feel free to let me know. Adding some Thalo Blue 110. Glazing a little bit on top of the turquoise. Now the tooth of the paper starts filling up, so it's time, almost time to burnish. A little bit more violet. And let's do some burnishing now, let's see what we end up with. Where is my, oh there. My white luminance, as always. Blend all these colors together and this will look really nice. All these colors blended together. The purple with the blue will look really nice. Then we'll also get this turquoise glow, which also looks really nice. Follow the curve of the wing when you're burnishing. So don't just go from left to right or from top to bottom, just really follow the curve. That will really add to the 3D effect of the drawing. All right, let's see what we can adjust now. I'm going in with Delft Blue again. Delft is actually a city here in the Netherlands. I studied there. Going to outline the wing a little bit more, make it a little bit cleaner. And now I can also quite easily add some texture. I don't really like the shape of that.
really a challenge to not go to dark. Thalo blue again, 110. Darken up the base, the feather. And in then three blue blue again for the hyping up the contrast. When burnishing, it all gets lightened up a little bit. So going in with in then three again, it will hype up the contrast again. Now with the tumbow, I want to start pulling out some highlights. So I made sure to cut it to a sharp point. And I also make sure that the tip is clean. Then carefully just pulling out some small highlights. Just some feathers that are catching the light a little bit more than the rest. And as long as you're not rubbing super hard, it will not damage the paper. Glazing a little bit of that light phthalo blue on top. And then to tone down the amount of blue a little bit, I think I want to go in with the dark green. And this is pine green, number 267. Create some more texture. Pine green is still not quite dark enough. I'm going for our chrome oxide green 278. That's a little bit darker. Adding some small strokes. Create some more detail on the edges of the feathers with indenturine blue. I want those edges to stand out.
All right, so now let's move on to the rest of the wing. And first I want to make sure that I have the wing nicely outlined. So I'm going to do that with inventorine blue again. Here I'm drawing out the edges of the orange feathers. Using light strokes. Creating a nice outline this way. I'm doing all the outlining with blue and I'm going to add more colors on top afterwards. Here we have quite dark shadows in between the feathers, so I'm already mapping those out with the indenturine blue. Keeping a very close look at my reference photo to see if I'm still doing okay. Making sure that I have everything sketched out right because it will become a lot easier then to use the rest of the colors.
here we have the larger feathers which are overlapping the smaller feathers Alright, time to add some more variation in there. I'm going to add Caput Morton Violet as a shadow color. So I'm going to put it first in the areas that are really in shadow. This will add a lot more dimension to the drawing. looking quite nice here below the wing I'm using it as a shadow color more colors will be added on top of that later Now I want to make these feathers a little brighter as well. A little bit of the turquoise on top. Going ahead with ultramarine blue. I'm trying to add as many different types of blue in it as I can. Otherwise it will look very boring. Don't worry too much about the details on the feathers yet. We will do that last. Just focus on the base colors first. Continuing with ultramarine.
All right, I wanted the darker blue on top. Going for helio blue reddish. Just below the second layer of feathers. I want to already create some shadow there. So the shadow that this layer of feathers is casting over the bottom layer. Want to do a little bit of burnishing on this part, so the very bottom. Not the shadows, just the lightest areas. bit more kaput morto. So I'm really jumping all over the place now. I think I'd have to start adding some black now. Yes, now I'm going to add some black, not a lot, just for the very darkest parts because there are some shadows that are so dark. So only there I'm going in with black. Contrast is super, super important. So that's what I want to spend most of my time on.
back to indigo blue. Alright, now it's starting to look quite nice and dense. Now I can also start burnishing this part. Maybe a little bit of Delft Blue for a bit more variation, a bit more purple. Keep looking at the details, keep looking at the reference. Okay, I'm going to burnish now. Off screen, I'm regularly cleaning my tip. So I don't want the tip of the pencil to get too dirty. Because then you can create a muddy colors. So... I just clean my tip with my fingers, just every few seconds, to make sure it stays it stays clean. All right, a little bit of highlighting here and there. Some edges of some feathers are a little bit highlighted, so I want to put pull that out now, while I still can. And I want to go back in and add some detail. Going in with indenturing blue this time. I'm going to clean up the tips of the overlaying section of feathers. Spend some more time on that. And also focus a bit more on the details on this layer. Alright, let's move on to the second part of the feathers. I'm going to start out with dark indigo as a shadow here. Alright, let's get on with this final little piece of feather. I'm going to start out with ultramarine 120.
Just drawing a light strokes following the direction of the feathers. Keeping it light so that I can still add more colors on top. Then I also have to draw around the orange feathers, which I'm going to layer in later, but I have to keep that space open. Keeping the strokes very light, leaving open some space in between them. Alright, let's pick another color. I want to go in with something lighter. Going in with light yellow blue again, 145. Just layer that on top to fill up the gaps.
All right, and now I want to start darkening up the feather a bit. So I want to go in with something darker now. And I think I'm going in with the Carnage, the Cobalt Blue 660. Drawing strokes to enhance the texture. I'm mainly adding this color in the shadow parts, so where the feathers are overlapping each other. Let's layer some turquoise on top, just for some variation in there. So this top part is catching quite a lot of light, so I want to make sure that I don't go too dark.
All right, let's do a little bit of burnishing. Just to get rid of the graininess. So I'm not pushing hard here. Now I'm going to add more shadow and more detail. So I'm going to go for indentarine blue, I think. And with this, I'm going to add the more darker textures, the more dark uh, shadows. Little shadow with chromium oxide green at the base of the feathers to give them a little more depth.
little bit more texture with helio blue reddish. Let's darken up this little shadow here with black, just a little bit of black. And that completes the tutorial for today. So this um, drawing took me about 10 hours to complete. The whole real-time version or the whole real-time tutorial, the 10 hours, are available on Patreon. So if you're interested in following this drawing along from start to finish, have a look on there. And then I want to thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.